Good afternoon. Um, my name is Igno Sibert. I'm one of the partners director here at Evita's Fertility Clinic in Pinelands, Cape Town. We specialize in problematic um, IVF cases, standard IVF, and we are also a referral clinic for advanced endoscopic procedures, um, specifically for um, bowel endometriosis, etc. The question I was asked to answer this to this afternoon briefly is the role of ovarian drilling in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome. But before we discuss the ovulation induction, I would first like to just bring you back to the relevance of the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is the most common hormonal endocrinopathy in young reproductive women. One out of 10 women will present with this problem. It is therefore extremely important that we make the correct diagnosis. The diagnosis consists out of three arms. The first one is a history of no ovulation. You have to prove that. Do you ovulate? Do you have a LH surge? Um, that is the first, the first leg arm of this diagnosis. The second one is the diagnosis of a polycystic ovary on ultrasound. Now, it is not just a lot of follicles that makes the diagnosis. There is a specific criteria, the Adams criteria, that you need to adhere to. The third one is the biochemical or the clinical proof that you have high male hormone. So you need to have two out of three of these three factors before we can make the diagnosis. You can then present with, for example, A and B or A and C or B and C or all three of them. So the four ways that you can present as a woman with polycystic ovarian syndrome. If we make the diagnosis, we've got to exclude other conditions that can also cause an ovulation and high male hormones, like adrenal problems, like a um, high prolactin level or a thyroid abnormality. So before we make the diagnosis, we've got to be very clear that we did make the right one and that we excluded other reasons for your condition. Now, 60% of women with polycystic ovarian syndrome are overweight. That is a lot of women and that is most probably the biggest problem in those women. We know today that if you lose a little bit of weight of 5 to 10%, you will start to ovulate. So the first modality of ovulation is lifestyle, is lose of weight. Secondly, we normally would start with metformin, which is an insulin sensitizer, if you are insulin resistant or if you are overweight. If you're not insulin resistant and if you're not overweight, the insulin sensitizers is most probably not going to work for you. The ovulation induction agent of choice currently that we use is Famara or Letrozole. It has been proven with a recent Cochrane review that it is as good and better on a live birth rate if we compare it with Clomid, which was the historic drug of use. Now we need to ask ourselves, where does ovarian drilling come in? So if you have lost weight, if we have put you on letrozole or clomid and you are not ovulating, we would normally put that woman on metformin. We've done the first review on this, on metformin in the ovulation resistant patient, and it has proven that 80% of those women will then ovulate. If you still not ovulate, after you've done your weight loss, after you've used your letrozole and your metformin, you then have two options. Either we do ovarian drilling or either we give you gonadotrophins. Now, there are factors or positive predictive factors that we'll need to adhere to before we do drilling. So if we need to go, for example, and need to assess your tubes, we can then do the drilling at the same time. But the, the, the predictive factors are the following. Firstly, your time of, of infertility, if it is longer than three years, it's not good to do ovarian drilling. 
Secondly, if you are overweight, it's not good a BMI more than 35. And thirdly, if you have a very high male hormone count in your blood, it is not good to do ovarian drilling. So there are factors that we need to look at before we do decide to do ovarian drilling. Cost plays a major role because we can do the drilling at the same time that you address an operation like endometriosis and it doesn't cost you money. On the other hand, if you do the stimulation with gonadotrophins, one ampule of gonadotrophin costs you about 300 rand. So we need to assess what is the best for the patient sitting in front of you when the patient is not ovulating on the medication, the Femara, the Clomid, and the metformin. If we do decide that drilling is for you, it is as effective as gonadotrophin. You must hear me, it is as effective, it is not inferior. But unfortunately, it is an invasive procedure. You need to get a laparoscopy, and then we take a tiny needle, an electrical needle, and we burn the ovary. Now, historically, 10, 20 years ago, we really burned that ovary because we thought if we burn the outer capsule of the ovary, we will reduce the production of male hormone. We know today that only two or three and even one hole for three to five seconds is adequate to induce ovulation. So the question always is, what are the side effects? Are, or are there any complications? There was a very good study done in the Netherlands looking at 15 to 20 years of follow-up after women had ovarian drilling. In this study, there was no higher risk of menopause. So are we harming the ovary if we do it correctly? There was no higher risk of an ectopic or a tubal pregnancy, meaning that you have got a high risk of adhesions, scar tissue after the ovarian drilling. Remember, this is if you do it correctly. One to three holes, three to five seconds. And then thirdly, the pregnancy rate after ovarian drilling in comparison with gonadotrophins was exactly the same. On top of this, the cumulative pregnancy rate in the second pregnancy was higher than the gonadotrophin um, treatment. So if you now look at this, ovulation induction in the patient with polycystic ovarian syndrome is really the problem. And you need to fulfill the criteria, need to address every little factor, and then the indication, if we reach the indication for ovarian drilling, if you are the right person, it is as effective as gonadotrophins with no more complications or side effects over a period of 15 to 20 years. I hope this shed a little bit of light on the problem or the issue, is ovarian drilling effective in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome? Thank you very much.